In this session, we are going to cover something known as the get and the post method that is used to submit the, the data that is entered by the user in the form back to a server-side scripting language, and in our case, which is PHP. So usually you have seen forms in HTML, and these forms have the form tag, uh, which includes the other elements of the form. Now inside this form tag, we have learned that to to assign an ID or a, or a, you know a, a unique identification for a form, we give it an ID and a name. Now ID is something that we use probably may use it in CSS, but the name you have seen that we need to use it in the previous session related to JavaScript form handling. We have seen that the name attribute is really important because when we want to select a form element, we can use an alternative method of using the name of the form. It says document dot the name of the form dot the name of the uh, element itself or the name of the item that is uh, that we want to listen to. Uh, so the ID and the name is used for identification of the form. Uh, what we need to have is define two new variables that we really need in, in case when the form is used for processing. And when we are going to HTML and CSS, these, these attributes are not necessarily set in the beginning. But these attributes are needed whenever you want to do something with the data that the, that the user enters. So up till now what we did was we used JavaScript to validate the user's data. So we were not sending the data to the server. We were actually just uh, reading the, waiting for the user to click the submit button. And then we were gathering this data in JavaScript. And then we were, you know, do, doing validation or doing some calculation based on the submission of the data. But this was all done in the browser at the client side. But suppose you want to send this data back to the server. So uh, let's say you have a login form. So that means you have to validate if the user, exi user exists or not, or the username and passwords combination is correct or not. Uh, if it's an email form, so you need to send that email to the specific user or the contact form, uh, something like this. So whenever you need the data to be sent to the server for processing, you need to define these two variables, two, uh, let's say, you know, parameters or arguments inside the form tag. Now, what are these? These two are action and method. So there are two things that we need to define in a form, which, which is logical, saying that what do we do with the form? You know, once the user enters the data, the, the two questions that arises is, where do I send this data to? And the second question that arises is, how do I send it? Okay, so this is the answer to these two questions. The parameter action, the, the, when you define the, the parameter action inside the, inside the form tag, this defines where do you want to send this data to? So there is a script waiting on the server side, which is expecting you to send some data to it so that it can process it. This is where you define the action. This is where this, this, this file name is included inside the action parameter. The other one is the method. In the method parameter, you need to specify how you want to send the data back to the server. There are two basic methods used in HTTP, which is get and post. So we are going to see these two methods uh, in action today. Uh, form submission, the basic process that happens when a form is submitted is let's suppose you are the user and you made a request for contact.html page. The server has this page ready, it's an HTML file so it doesn't have to process it. So it picks up the file and sends it back to you. In the form, the, the contact.html page contains a form. So as a user, you fill in the details in the form and then you press the submit button. As soon as you press the submit button, the browser looks up to these two parameters inside your form tag, which is the action and the method. And it determines where to send this data to and how to send it. So once it gets this data, they say, okay, now you need to send it to process.php using the get method. It uses that procedure to send that data to the process.php file, which is residing on the server. It's the server. Now the server gets the data in this in this script and it evaluates the data, which is you know does some action on the data, and compiles the the process.php page by using that data connecting to a database server or something like that, and then whatever happens it returns you back an HTML page with acknowledgement saying okay whatever action we requested either happened successfully or some error happened, okay something like that. 
So this is how a typical form submission process works. Now let's go on. As I mentioned, we need to know how the data is sent. So there are two methods, the get method and the post method. So let's, let's uh, discuss the get method first. Now whenever we want to send the data back to the server using the get method, what happens is the, the browser takes your data and appends it, you know, adds it to the end of your URL and sends it back to the server. So the data is sent through the URL. Okay, so let's see how how this works. I mean, it's it's uh, let's see that in action. So I have a form over here, which has two fields, username and password, and a button. So whenever I press this button, it is expected to go to some page. Okay, and then it has to carry this data to that page. So first of all, we'll see how this method, the get method works. So I have this form, which is a pretty simple form, as I just told you. The name of the page is sender.html, and it is a, it's, a, it's an HTML form, which has two items, as we just saw, which is the username field and the password field. And we have a button for submission of the form. Now you can see that initially, when I, when I was explaining you about the form tag, I told you that name is used as an identification for the form. But there are two things that we necessarily need whenever we want to sub whenever we want to submit the data entered by the user in the form back to the server and these two data items are the uh, action and the method so these are the two things that we need whenever we want to send the data so action is the location where i want to send the data to and the, here in my case the location i have created a php file called receiver.php so i'm going to use that file receiver.php and the method as I mentioned there are two methods get and post since we are studying the first method let's let's go to that method first the get method okay now once I save this form I will go back to my page I just made this two changes so action and method now when I go back to my page I will just enter that date and any data that I, I want to send to the server Muhammad and let's say I enter some password and I press the login button you can see that don't worry about this form because we haven't completed our our page of handling the data here so but just notice this this URL you can see that in this URL you have the data that is appended towards the end of the URL so let's let's see a, a quick dissection of how this this is happening okay so let's say I have this was the data that was sent right to, to the URL now what is the, what is included inside this URL? As you can see clearly that I have over here, uh, let's say this is coming from the action. You know, this was coming from the action. Uh, something, I think this is from the previous session. Let me just clear the board. Okay. Uh, okay clear the page let's do it again okay so now what is happening here is you can see this this is my this receiver.php is the is coming from my action if you remember I wrote uh, an action right uh, an action attribute and inside the action attribute what I did was I was trying to send my data to this location which is receiver.php whatever is before that is you know the, the server address because it is it has to be in some place at the server so this is my this is my server host name uh, and the port number and the location inside so it is it is residing inside a folder called method and inside the method I have the file called receiver.php okay so this is the this is the URL URL of the uh, of the location I want the whole complete URL okay now you the one thing that you have to notice very important is whatever is sent after the name of the file which is receiver.php here it starts usually with a question mark this is very important you need to know that whenever you want to send the data back to the server it has to be sent by by separating the data from the path by using the question mark anything after the question mark over here this is referred to as a query string okay you call this a query string 
So what you are doing is you're sending this data back to the server as a query string. Now query string, whenever you send the data back, the data has two parts. The name, you can see over here, this is the key. This is the key, okay? This is the key. And then you have the value, okay? The, the other part that you have over here is the value. The key and the value pairs are separated by an equal sign. So this equal to this, the key equal to value. So, and then if you have more than one item to send, you separate the, those items by an ampersand sign. So anytime you have to separate it, you have to separate that with an ampersand sign. And then you say password equal to one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is what I, I just sent from my from the sender.html page to the receiver.php page. Now what is this UID? Now the key value is what I entered. If you look at the form, you can you can go back to the form. This is what I entered over here. This is what I'm entering over here. One, two, three, four is I'm entering over here. So this is the value is what the user enters. But what is the key? The, if you can notice this key, the name of these keys, the PWD and the UID, is actually the name inside the form element. This is why when we were studying HTML, I precisely stressed on the fact that the name of an element in the form is very important. First of all, you, you usually use this name in JavaScript. Even if you omit, you can actually do it. You, you can get the element by other means as well, you know, by ID or by, uh, by class name or by tag name. So there is possibility in JavaScript on alternative if you forget the name. But if you forget the name, the data that you are entering is never sent back to the server if you don't write this. Let me give you an example. Let's say, for example, I will just remove this. Okay, I'm going to remove the name, name uh, parameter over here. Okay. And I, when I go back to my page, let me refresh the page, and I try to enter my data, and I try to send it by using the login. You can see over here at the top that name is not no longer sent because there is it doesn't have the, the field itself doesn't have the name attribute. So if you don't have the name attribute, the data that you are entering is not sent back to the server. So this is why it is very important that whenever you are having a form, the name our name parameter is usually defined otherwise nothing will be sent back to the server okay so this is what is sent this is what you see over here this is the name this is the key the key is actually the name in the form element and the value is what the user enters okay so i hope this is clear this is how the data is sent this is the queries the way the data is sent now this is not uh, common let's let's list uh, so this is how you know, get method works, okay, well, pretty much how it works. It sends the data through the URL, okay. Uh, when do we use it? We use it whenever the data, whenever we have short forms, you know, because we are, you are adding the data in the URL. So the URL has a specific length. You cannot have a URL which is too long. So if you have a form, let's say you are filling a form for registration and registration has 10 fields, you are not expected to use the get method because the get method assumes that you have to send this all this data that you are entering in the in the URL and the URL has a set limit on the side and the length of it so you cannot send it by the URL so you have to use get method whenever you have very small forms like a search form or a login you cannot use it for a login form for different reasons okay I'll, I'll tell you that reason the second thing is you usually use it with forms which have, you know, selections or radio buttons or check boxes because you send only just one item or two items. The data is limited when you are sending this. You do not use it whenever the form is secure because you just saw that whenever try, when I was trying to send it, you can see my password here. Although in HTML you are seeing, you know, the password is masked, so you are seeing you know, dots in place of place of the password that I'm typing. But when you press the submit key, I can see my password in my URL, so it is no longer secure. It's, uh, so it's it's better not to use the get method whenever you are trying to send sensitive data back to the server. Okay, so for that reason, when so you know 
when you have a short form or you're not sending something sensitive you use the get method for example google.com if you go to google.com and type you know a search query press enter you can see at the top over here that Google is using Q equal to web so it's using a question mark Q equal to web so it is sending the data back to the server by using the get method why first of all it's not secure it doesn't need to be secure it's just writing a query and the second thing it's a short form it just have one input variable one input uh, field okay so this is how it works uh, so this is the reason this is where you should use the get method the other method that we have is the post method in the post method we send the data from the browser to the server but it is not sent inside the url you can see that nothing is added over here the process.php is called but you're not sending anything back to the server so in that case how are you sending it the data has to be sent somehow but it is not sent through the url so let's see how is it sent Okay, so I'm going to go, go back to my page. If I want to just make this form send it by the post method, I just replace this get with a post. That's it. That's the only change I need to make in here to send the data back to the server. So I just change the method from get to post. And let's go back to our page, refresh the page, and see how it is sent. So I'm going to write the name and I'm going to type a password, say login. Now you can see that at the top over here, I no longer have the query string. I don't no longer have the question mark key value pairs. So the data is, but the data is sent. So how is it sent? Just, just to show you how it is sent, just right click on, on the page and use inspect to get the look of how data is. And I am going to go to the network tab. Okay. And this is, this is what happened when I press the submit button. The receiver.php page was called by using the post method and the status was okay and these are this is where you can see the headers you know if you whenever you learn about network protocols you see whenever you are sending a request from the browser to the server you use the HTTP protocol the the underlying protocol that is used to send is TCP IP now TCP usually is a packet now this packet has the head some headers and some uh, message header body uh, sorry message body and the message header so this is the this is where you can see the headers the request headers it tells you, you know what kind of data you are expecting uh, if it has encoding or the language that you are using the type of where did the request originate from and these kind of things okay now the one thing that is important over here is you can see that you can also send data in the header so the data is actually not shown to you, but the data is sent behind inside the header in the packet. Okay, and it's a good way to send the data, right? So you are using UID. Uh, so in this case, I'm using UID Muhammad and PWD 12345. And this is this is what this is the data that I'm sending back to the server. Okay, so as I hope this is clear. So the post, so just to again the get method sends the data through the URL the post method sends the data inside the header of the TCP packet that is sent from the browser to the server whenever you press the submit button okay so this is how things work now when do we use the post method whenever we are having long forms because long forms as I mentioned cannot be attached the data cannot be sent inside the URL uh, forms where you're using a text area, you know, we are writing a lot of text inside. So this is important that 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 huge amount of text must be sent uh, other than appending it inside the URL. Uh, and whenever the form security is important, you don't want people to know what you are sending by looking at your URL at the top. Because anyone behind you can actually see the URL. The URL is uh, open for anyone to see. Okay. So this is how, this is the difference between the get and the post method. Now the question arises over here is, I send the data over here, but currently I don't. I want to see whatever I sent over here. So if you look at the receiver.php page that I created, it's a simple page where I have a div tag with, with h1 which is welcome and username and password is shown, but it's empty. I did not, I'm not getting the data from this, from this, from whatever you sent from the browser 
So I need to get it from the browser and show it over here. The question is, how do I do that? So there is a step-by-step -step process, but it's, it's pretty simple to, to understand. The, the steps are there to understand it. So you remember that the data is sent wherever uh, by using a key value pair. And the key value pair, the key is the name inside the form. And the value is whatever the user enters. So whenever the data is sent, the data is sent by creating an associative array. And this concept is very popular in PHP, the using of associative arrays. We saw this concept when we were using database handling. So whenever the data you requested from the server comes back to the comes back to you, the, if, uh, when you run a query, the data is actually stored inside an associative array. Here also the, the, the data is stored inside an associative array. So what happens is, first of all, you need to create a variable where you want to store the data that you're receiving. And then you use the name of the array of the associative array. We need to know what is the name of the array. Okay, we'll do that in a little while. And then we use the square brackets to specify the key. This is, you remember, this is how you get it. So if you're having a regular array, you use the index, which is 0, 1, 2, 3. And if it's an associative array, you use the key value inside. And the key value, as I mentioned, is the name in the form. This is how you are sending the data, right? So this is, I'm using username or password. In our case, we are using QID and PWD. Now the question arises is, what is the name of the array? Because we cannot use array-name. This is just a placeholder. So we have to use the name. So which, which array is created in, in our case? The name of the array is unique. It's fixed. So if you're using the get method, the array is dollar underscore get. If you're using the post method, the array is dollar underscore post. So these are the two arrays that are created based on the method that you are using. Okay, so let's see how it works. So I'm going back to my sender.html page and instead of post, I'm going to reset it back to my get method and I'm going to go to my receiver page over here. Now, I don't want to store it in a variable because I just want to show it. So I can use the echo. So I'm writing PHP here. So I'll say PHP and close it. And inside this PHP statement, I'm going to use echo and I'm going to show the data that I'm receiving. Remember I told you that we receive the data as an array, as an associative array, and the name of the associative array is dollar underscore get. And then I use the square brackets to specify the key name. In my case, the key is UID. Okay. And then I will repeat the same thing over here in the next tag, which is echo dollar underscore get. And this time I will use PWD. Okay, I'm going to save my page now and let's go back to our uh, browser, refresh this and just do this again, say login and you can see the data that we are receiving. I'm using the get method so you can see the data is coming in the URL and I'm going to send it by username and password and I can see it over here because I'm using the dollar underscore get array. Now the difference with using the post method is very very simple. What we do is, we instead of using the get method, I'm going to replace it by the post method, and I go to the receiver page, and instead of using the get array, I have to use the post array. And that's it. Okay, let's go back, refresh our page, go back over here, okay, say login, and this is what I entered username and password and you can see it is using the post method because you do not see anything attached to the URL over here at the top and you have the username and password that is sent from the from the browser from by the uh, submitted by the user okay so that's the difference so you use the name the name of the in the action you specify the location and in the method you specify the method you are using. There are two methods that are available in, in HTML, get and the post method. And the get method sends it through a URL, the post method send it through, sends it through the uh, header, inside the header. And the receiver, whenever you are receiving it, you have to use the get and the post. I have a question. Let's say I don't know which method is mentioned here. No, there is a front-end developer and a back-end developer. So a front-end developer is developing based on some guidelines and you don't know if they're using a post method or a get method. So in that case, what you can do is 
you can use a third type of array which is called request request is an array which will work even if it is get or post doesn't matter which method you are using it works for both so let's go back to our page uh, refresh this say see it works and even if I go back and change my method to get and I will not do any changes in the in the uh, in the receiver.php page and let's refresh it and say one one submit and you can see it is sending it through URL and I'm still receiving it so the request array is the third type of array where you can receive both if the method is get or post the only difference is it's a little bit slower than the other methods because in the get array you know where to get it you need to look in the get array if in the post uh, array if you're using the post you, you look in the dollar underscore post array uh, but if you're using request it will have to look at both of them and find where the data is available which one is available and which one is null and it will get the data from that specific uh, array that is created for the uh, in the in the backend okay so this is the there are, these are the three ways you can get the form variables from the server in the next session we will talk more about uh, about going back to a Python project.